Hi Aries, this is Teresa. Welcome to April. Teresa from Tarot by T. And this month we have a new moon in your sign, right on April 1st. For some of you it might be May, uh, March 30th, depending on where you live, but um, if you're in, on the East Coast or in other parts of the world, it's April 1st. And what else is happening this month? Venus moves into Pisces, Mercury moves into Taurus, Mars moves into Pisces. We have a full moon in Libra on the 16th. And at the end of the month, Pluto goes retrograde. And then we have another new moon eclipse in Taurus. But I'm not going to talk about that one until next month because it'll be affecting May more than it will affect April. But actually, eclipses could happen a month before. But I want it, you know, I'll just go into, um, I'll go into the astrology later. Anyway. So let's see what the cards say for love and relationships for Aries for this month, for the April. And this is no April Fool. <laughs> April Fool's joke. Okay, what does Aries need to know about love and relationships for the month of April? What does Aries need to know about... Love and relationships. May only the highest forces be present to ensure that the truth be told. What's coming up for Aries this month? The Six of Swords. The Queen of Swords. The King of Swords in the past. The Four of Cups. The King of Pentacles. The Seven of Wands. The Nine of Pentacles. The Knight of Wands. The Nine of Cups. And the Lovers. And the card at the bottom of the deck. The Nine of Swords. Okay. So this month, you start off with... I think you're, uh, you might be moving <laughs> or traveling. Okay, so you have the Six of Swords energy. This is about moving away from difficulty and sorrow. And it's crossed by the Queen of Swords. Um, the Six of Swords is, you know, it can mean a physical move. And especially because you have the Knight of Wands energy in your environment. So it's possible you could be thinking about moving. Um, but even if you stay where you are, things are going to improve. The energies are improving. Um, because the six of, sixes represent harmony, greater harmony. You have this Queen of Swords energy. So this could be you or someone that you're dealing with. And it could be an older person, maybe a mother figure or an authority figure, a boss figure even. And that you may feel like this person is being really harsh and judgmental or um, emotionally unavailable, like you can't reach out to them, you can't, you can't get through to them. I feel that um, things might improve. You just have to talk with them. You just have to have a conversation. And this queen, this could be either male or female. The, I don't go by the gender of the card, just the personality of the card because it could represent either sex. So the queen energy is someone who is kind of aloof, kind of reserved. Um, she's no nonsense, you know, not, doesn't want to hear BS, wants to hear the truth. She can be judge, a little bit judgmental and harsh, but she's very fair. She tries to make fair decisions based on logic, not her emotions. So if you're trying to appeal to someone you know, on their, based on their compassion, you're not going to get far with her. You have to appeal to her based on what makes sense, what's logical. You know, have a, a plan that, that is well thought out. In the past, you have the King of Swords. Now, sometimes when you have these two cards together of the same suit, uh, it can mean a strong connection. So if this is a relationship partner, you both are, you know, you have a strong connection, but it's one. It's, there's not a lot of emotion there, because the King of Swords energy 
And this could be either your energy or so the other person. This person does a lot of thinking. He, this person thinks more than he feels. He can be emotionally um, hard to read. He doesn't make decisions based on emotion. He makes decisions based on what he thinks is going to work. He looks at all the angles and says, you know, is this, does this make sense? Um, so you, if you're having a connection with someone or you've had a connection with someone, it may have been more intellectual than emotional. So it's not like, you know, there's a lot of gushy love, but, it, but there is a lot of sharing of ideas and communication. And so you're, you like see eye to eye in that way. You're, it's like a meeting of the minds. You had the Four of Cups in the recent past, and here with the Nine of Swords. The Four of Cups is a card of boredom. I feel like you're bored with your life or your relation. You could be bored, feeling bored with the relationship. Maybe you don't feel like you're being valued or appreciated, and you're thinking, um, you know, maybe I should look elsewhere. Maybe I should see what else is out there because I'm not getting what I need from this relationship. And the Four of Cups, you know, someone's offering you something, but you're not sure you want it. It's like, I don't know if this is right for me. I don't, I mean, I, so there could be a relationship in your life that is not exactly what you want, but it's there for now. You know, it's like Mr. or Mrs. Right now, but not Mr. or Mrs. Right. Um, this is also a card of not really ready. To, you haven't been ready to change your situation. You've just been thinking like, well, I'm not happy. And I want to make some changes, but I'm not ready to do it right now. And with the Nine of Swords, there's a lot of mental stress. So this could be your energy, this King of Swords or the Queen of Swords energy, where you're overthinking things. You're thinking of all the possibilities and all the angles. Like, well, if I do this, what will happen? If I do that, what will happen? Sometimes there's guilt connected with the Nine of Swords energy. You're tormented by your thoughts. You're up at night thinking, you know, what do I do? Do I leave this relationship? Do I stay with this relationship? Do I stay where I'm living here? Do I move somewhere else? You know, because everything seems to be, um, you have a lot of worry. Like, uh, imagining worst case scenarios is what I see with the Nine of Swords. Like, and a lot of those worst case scenarios may not happen. It's just that you're bringing them up in your mind because you're being very discriminating. These cards, the sword people are very discriminating. Um... Like I said, they're not making, you know, a lot of times we'll say, but I love this person, I'm just going to go with them to the ends of the earth, even if, it, you know, they don't care, you know, you're not thinking about what makes sense, you're just think, following your heart. These people don't follow their heart as much as they follow what's what's practical, what makes sense, what's right. Like, this, you know, it's more of a, a clinical or a colder view. They just, like, just give me the facts. Just the facts, ma'am. So coming up in the future, you have this King of Pentacles. Now this person, this is someone who has, it could be an earth sign, because now these swords could be air signs. You could be dealing with a Libra, uh, Gemini, Aquarius. It could be the other person's energy. It could be part of your energy. The Pentacles here represent earth, someone down to earth. So this could be a Virgo, a Taurus, a Capricorn. This, this person has money, cares about family, cares about providing for their family, um, cares about, you know, just wants to take care of their family. And so part of that is making money so that they can pay the bills, so they can have a roof over their head. So you could be dealing with someone in the future um, who is going to, could be helping you. This is in a position of someone who could, could be, some energy that's coming in that's that could be a help to you. And you have the Seven of Wands here, which is a card of, overcoming obstacles and achieving a goal but you have to stand your ground and set some boundaries so um, if you're having so you, if you're having doubts about a relationship maybe you just have to set some boundaries or maybe this person is going to be setting some boundaries and you have to abide by them but I feel like this person could help you so it could be a new interest coming in if it's not a love interest, it could be someone who helps you out financially because they have abundance. They have money. They are in a position to help if you need some kind of assistance. Um, you have the Nine of Pentacles here. This is a card of 
the the Nine of Pentacles, sometimes it could represent um, entrepreneurship, like working for yourself in some way or being independent financially. Um, if you have a financial situation that's comfortable or you find yourself, you know, yeah, I have this, this home, I have a roof over my head, I'm happy with it, but I don't have anyone to share it with. You, you may be feeling like I want to... Um, I want to have a partner. I want to have a relationship. If you're not in a relationship, you may be seeking one. And it may even be that you travel. Like you may feel like I have to change my life. I have to move somewhere else because there's more opportunity there. Um, and I'm tired of being alone. The other way that this, you know, this plays out is this person has... Um, the hawk as their power animal. The hawk usually represents a message. So this could be someone you know who is comfortable financially, um, but th this person's in your negative thinking sector, so maybe you're just not thinking positively about this person. So there could be a relationship that you could get help from someone, but you're not um, reaching out for it. Or you're waiting for a message. Either they or you are waiting for a message. And the hawk can sometimes bring that unexpected message. So there could be a message coming in April that actually helps you in some way. In your environment, you have the Knight of Wands energy. The Knight of Wands comes up when you change jobs or you change where you live. So you could be making changes, um, like moving to a new job, moving to a new home. And that's going to open up some new opportunities to meet new people. Um, you could even be working for yourself with this Nine of Pentacles energy, working remotely, figuring like finding an income stream where you don't have to work like at a physical location, or you can work in a sense where you're more independent and you have more autonomy, more freedom. And then in, in your wish fulfillment sector, you have the Nine of Cups. That's a wish fulfillment. That's a yes to your answer. So if you're looking for love in a relationship in, in April, you can get it. You can meet someone. You have the lovers here that can be very significant. But the love is also involves a choice. So the choice is, do I? it could be, do I stay or do I go? The choice is, do I choose this person over that person? The choice could be, do I choose this path over that path? Do I stay where I am and try to make things work here? Do I move to a new area and try to make things work somewhere else? The thing about the lovers is um, the choice that you make is going to be very serious. It's going to alter your life path one way or another. It's kind of a choice, and especially this is, comes up, it will be coming up during the eclipse. Um which is happening at the end of the month, the eclipse in Taurus. But the choice, it's like you're you're making a decision, and once you choose, you can't go back on it. It's not like, well, okay, I'm going to move here for a while, then I'll move back. It'll be like a permanent decision. So if you choose one person over another, you're not going to be able to go back to that other person. It'll be over, you know, forever, for good, or for a long period of time. If you choose to give up an opportunity and stay where you are, that opportunity goes away. If you choose to leave whatever you you have now and move into a new situation, what you have now disappears. So you have to really choose wisely this month, and maybe that's why again these swords are coming up because it's more, you're doing a lot of thinking. You have to make wise decisions this month about relationships, what to keep, what to let go of. And also about changes in your life, whether you're going to move somewhere or start over somewhere else. Think about what you're giving up. Think about what you want to keep. Because whatever you make, it, the decision you make this month is going to be life-altering. And it's going to be permanent. Um, it can bring you, I mean, the Nine of Cups is a great card. It's a wish fulfillment card. It can bring you what you need. You, can, you have the potential to have a wish fulfilled this month. But you have to really know what you want. And make your choice wisely. Choose wisely. It's not a, a light choice like, should I have vanilla or chocolate? You know, or, or oh, I'm going to choose chocolate today, but tomorrow I'll go back and get the vanilla. No. Whatever you choose, you're going to be with. 
for a long time and what and the other choice goes away so that's the main message that's coming up in this reading um let me look at okay i want to do an angel card reading for you also because i feel that this is going to be a very April is going to be a turning point month, a very significant month, especially because you have your new moon there. It's We're in Aries energy at the beginning of the month. Um, so this is your time for new beginnings, for a reset. Okay, let's see what we got. I don't think this is... Okay, I think that's one of the cards that go with the deck. Okay. Prayer. Dear Guardian Angel, help me to believe that all is possible through love. Help me manifest my dreams and live an inspiring and fulfilling life. Help me to feel God's presence in every moment. Help me to feel eternally loved. And thank you for being always by my side. So you have... Um, the guardian angels are looking out for you this month. And what I feel that you can ask for their assistance because they can't interfere in your life unless you ask. So ask and you will receive, as they say. Um, and you'll get guided. If you're having problems making a decision, don't stress. Ask for guidance. Say, God, the universe, whatever you believe in, help me to choose the right thing. And you will be guided to the right choice. Okay, let's see what's happening in the astrology. So you have the new moon in Aries at 11 degrees on April 1. And this moon, it's in your first house. So, and it's conjunct Mercury and Chiron, the wounded healer. So you have, Mercury is about messages and communication and thinking. Chiron is about Healing a wound. You might have a healing conversation with someone. Um, I think you have, if if you really feel like you need to send someone a message or have a conversation with someone, this would be a good time to start right after the new moon to tell someone how you really feel, to have that conversation, to heal some wounds. You can heal some wounds this month. And you could, and you could um, start off on a new path. Or a new you, like create a new you, um, where you're expressing yourself, you're dropping your guard, you're showing your vulnerability, um, and you are healing. And once you heal certain wounds that you can only do by bringing them up and talking about it, um, you will be like a new person. It's almost like a rebirth, and a reset. At the same time, okay, Venus had been in between last month, Saturn and Mars. Now she's moved away from Saturn, but she's still close enough. She's in her 11th, the 11th house. Saturn and Mars are still in the 11th house, and Mars is moving toward a conjunction with Saturn. That's tough energy. Um, so Venus in the 11th, you really have to make a decision about a friend. It, it could be either you make a commitment to that friendship or the groups that you belong to, because the 11th house represents group energy. Who are my friends? Um, which And with Saturn in the 11th house, you're really evaluating that. Who's there for me? And who do I need to let go of? Who do I need to hold on to? You have to see the reality of your situation. Saturn shows us um, what's real in our life. And if you have, it's also the house of hopes and dreams. So if you have a goal that you want to achieve, Venus is there to help you through love or money, you know. Mars is there for you to take action and to be ambitious. And Saturn is there. It's going to be work. You have to work hard to achieve that goal. You have to step up to the plate, make a commitment, not be afraid to take responsibility. So if you want to make changes in your friendships and get on the right path, it's going to involve work, but you have friends to support you. You're not going to be alone, but you have to do the work. They can't do it for you. And this Venus, Saturn, and Mars are squaring the North Node in Taurus, and that's in your second house. And the North Node is like the direction you need to go in. And that's about, in your second house, it's like 
you're questioning your values. What do I value? What do I want to keep in my life? What, you know, is it money? Is it possessions? What gives me security? You're going to be working hard for these things. Um, and it, you may have to get out of your comfort zone to get on that path. It's also the house of self-esteem, working on valuing yourself and not settling for less and working to so that your friendships and your goals help you feel better about yourself as well. At the same time, we have Jupiter and Neptune coming together this month. This is a big thing because not only are they coming, Jupiter conjunct Neptune in transit is a good thing normally. You know, it's a positive, um, you know, Jupiter is a positive planet. It brings luck and opportunity. Neptune is about spirituality, achieving a goal or a dream. It's about dreaming and making that dream real. But when it comes together in Pisces, which is rare, this is, you know, it hasn't done this since the 1800s. So you have an opportunity to fulfill a long-held goal or dream. And this is happening in your 12th house. And the 12th house is the house of what's hidden. So maybe you're going to realize what you really want if you have if you've been sweeping it under the rug. But it could also mean um, you know healing. It's the twelfth house has a is a psychological healing house. Maybe you have a chance to heal from some of the baggage or the wounds from the past, even karmic wounds, because the twelfth house can represent karmic wound wounds that um, are like in your family lineage kind of. So if you've got this pattern in your family going on, you have the opportunity to heal, to talk about it and heal it and not let it control you from your unconscious because that's the 12th house is also your unconscious. So I feel like this is a new opportunity to really heal, to find healing and to drop some baggage and to release old karma and old habits and to have a renewed sense of hope and a renewed sense of connection to some kind of spiritual path. You know, maybe you were kind of not kind of like not really doing anything that meant anything to you. Like it's being some being part of something that's greater than yourself. It's like a raising of consciousness, an awakening. So you could have a spiritual awakening this month that will be a positive influence in your life. Um, and it will get you on the right path because Neptune and Jupiter are sextile the North Node in Taurus and it will give bring you this awakening is going to lead to greater security and greater um, self-empowerment where you're going to feel more uh, you're going to value yourself more as well because you can't attract love and financial support if you don't think highly of yourself you have to really value yourself and rate and you know when you love yourself in a healthy way then you attract other loving and healthy people, and then you attract blessings from the universe. And that's what that's what this, this is going to be a major turning point for you this month. Then we have the full moon in Libra, which is happening across your relationship sector. So the moon in Libra is in the seventh house. And sometimes full moons bring endings or a completion. Um Things get revealed at the full moon in your relationship, so you're going to be more aware of the um, what's going on in a relationship. You're going to have to make a decision, and so it could lead to an ending, or it could lead to a commitment, one way or another. You know, um, the the thing is, whatever this moon brings, it's squaring Pluto. It's really it's a tight square. So Pluto is the planet of transformation, change rebirth, death and rebirth. So you could be rising from the ashes. Um, it could bring death to a relationship or not death, physical death, but more like an ending of a cycle. And then you, like you destroy what's false so that you could rebuild in a better direction. And especially in your 10th house, the 10th house has to do with your public self, your life, your status. So it could be major career changes. You could be starting a new job for some of you. That really, it changes your life direction. Sometimes Pluto in the 10th can mean going from single to married or married to single. It could change, it changes your status, your public status. So important culmination this month. Know exactly what you want. Again, Saturn is in the 11th house at this time. So you're really thinking about your goals and your dreams in a serious way. Can, and you're, you know, you have to decide. 
Um, can I do the, uh, am I willing to do the work? Am I willing to make a commitment to my dream and, and manifest it? With Saturn in the 11th house, you could be connecting with friends that are, there is an age difference. And one of you is like a parent to the other. Or one of you is like a guide, you know, guiding you. You're, like you're, prof you're benefiting by someone else's wisdom. Or if you're older, uh, you could be the one with the wisdom and you're spreading your wisdom in a group, you know, sharing your wisdom. Um, Mercury and Uranus are coming together in your second house. That's good news about money. It could be unexpected. Uh, Uranus in the second house can bring fluctuations in finances. And Mercury, um, you're doing a lot of thinking about how can I bring more financial, more security in my life, more financial stability. You may decide that you want to start your own business, that you don't want to work for someone else. You want to just be, you know, the um, you want to control your own faith. You want to control, um, you want to do, you know, be like an independent contractor or something. You don't want to be under the, um, under the thumb of someone else. And that's his nine of pentacles card energy. And it's sextile Venus in the 12th house. So at this point, Venus has moved into Pisces. It's, she's moved out of your 11th house and has moved into your 12th house. So you could have hidden feelings for someone that you're not willing to express. You could be secretly in love with someone or have a hidden crush. Um, maybe at this point you decide to talk about it or you hear it. You get a message from someone unexpectedly and they let you know how they feel too. Because I feel like at the full moon, feelings are going to be revealed. Whatever's hidden comes to the surface. You've got Venus in the 12th, so it could be that someone loves you and you didn't even know about it. Or you discover your own feelings for someone. Um, and all month, like after the, the initial Jupiter-Neptune conjunction, it's still there at this full moon because it's only a couple of days after. Jupiter and Neptune have form an exact conjunction on the 12th of April, and they're going to be pretty close together for the rest of the month. So um, that's going to be significant. You can manifest a dream this month. If you're looking for love and commitment and a true soulmate connection, you can have it, but you're going to have to also step up to the plate and take responsibility and do the work and reveal, like drop your guard and reveal your feelings. If you're hiding your feelings, it's not going to move the relationship forward. Um, and then, at, so up until this point, all the planets have been going direct. Pluto is going to go retrograde on the 29th. And so that's going to shift. And Pluto's in your 10th house. So you may be rethinking your life path around when Pluto, Pluto goes retrograde it's a time to take a step back and think like, well, maybe I moved ahead too fast. Maybe I need to retrace some of my steps. So be careful, like really consider your, your, um, your goals and your plans and your actions carefully. Cause Aries had a tendency to want to move ahead quickly. You know, you jump first and then you look and see if there's, if you have the parachute or not, you know, so really don't be too hasty. Don't jump into something without carefully considering it. I'm not saying be afraid and be a stick in the mud. I mean, you may need to break out of your comfort zone, but really think about what you want and what's going to bring you the best, the most, you know, your, what do you really want? What do you need to be happy? What is going to fulfill you the most before you just jump into the next thing? Because you may be like, oh, yeah, here's this opportunity. Let me jump on it. And then after you get there, you're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that, <laughs> you know. So be, I'm not saying that you shouldn't jump. Just make sure that, it's ex that you know, where you're going to land is going to be good for you. And that um, you know what you want and you know what you're getting into. And if you're prepared to do the work and you're prepared to really commit to the goal, you have this Nine of Cups and the Lovers. You can really create something special this month. And especially, I'm only going to touch briefly on the, the eclipse, but on the 30th, we have this new moon eclipse in your second house of money, values, security, self-worth. So um, there could be sudden new beginnings happening around this eclipse. I'll get into that more next month. Thank you, everyone, for those who have been supporting this channel. Um, I really appreciate your support. I wouldn't be here without you. And if you'd like a private reading, just click on the link in the description box and it will take you to my website. We can get you on the schedule. And this would be a reading that just deals with your issues, your specific situation. 
these are general readings, so they might not apply to everyone. Take what what, what resonates and leave the rest. But um, in the meantime, have a happy birthday, Aries. Enjoy April. Um, and I'll talk to you again next month. Okay, bye now.